This is your winter weather outlook with discussion about ENSO or El Nino Southern Oscillation and the climate for Southern California. This presentation is brought to you by Alex Tardy, the Warning Coordination Meteorologist at the National Weather Service in San Diego. Here's a look at our agenda. We're going to take a look at last winter 2012 to 2013 and the early start. We'll also take a look at the summer monsoon and the current conditions. Then we'll take a close look at ENSO or El Nino Southern Oscillation current conditions in the Pacific Ocean. We'll look at past years and the extreme variability that resulted from those precipitation years. And then finally we'll take a look at the winter weather outlook for 2013 to 14. We'll also take a quick look at some new web-based tools that you can monitor forecasts. All right, jumping into last year, we started off the year very wet, especially in central and northern California. A series of storms, a train of storms along an atmospheric river, a high area of tropical moisture tapped in from the lower latitudes, began to impact California in late November and continued right through early December as shown here. Here's a depiction of an atmospheric river. This is a look at not the cloud cover or the rainfall. This is a look at the moisture of the atmosphere. And you can see the direct tap into the tropics. And that river of moisture, that band of moisture, extended into California, basically between the end of November and early December. Precipitation was significant. Some areas in Northern California, over 20 inches of rain. Rainfall in Southern California, we were on the far southern edge. We did have some locations in the San Bernardino Mountains that had two or three inches of rainfall. What that amounted to in December was much above normal for half of California and some places even in Southern California. As you can see here, rain occurred all the way down to San Diego and some of our mountain locations in the San Diego Mountains, for example, were above normal. How significant was this type of event? Well, the magnitude can be shown here clearly for the entire Sierra Nevada, where most of our water comes from, outside of the Colorado River. Look at the amount of rainfall that occurred end of November into late December. Basically, half of the precipitation for the entire water year occurred in December. The year ended up below normal, but still about half of the precipitation occurred from just a couple cycles of storms. All right, how did it fare for us? Well, basically from October through April of last winter, the jet stream was split. And what this means is the main jet stream was going to our north into the Pacific Northwest. There was a ribbon of the jet stream that carved across Southern California and did provide numerous storms for our region, but most of them on the weak side. Here's a look at some of the precipitation events. You can see this time last year, a storm system moved through with precipitation. A couple in November, several in December, including around Christmas. Then January had basically two storms and same with February, two significant storms in February. And remember they were cold storms, much of the energy and moisture came from the north and dove down across California. Santa Ana wind events, well, there were several, and those are listed here. The October 25-26 Santa Ana event was very similar to the event we just had the other day. Here's a look at one of those storms that moved through with quite a bit of cold air from Canada. It produced showers and thunderstorms at the end of December of last year. Here's one of the photos submitted from a large water spout. Okay, when you look at the water year from October to October, last wet season, basically you see a lot of orange and yellow. That's 50 to 60 percent of normal over most of the region, the only exception in some of the mountains of San Diego County. The numbers more specifically, San Diego, Lindbergh Field, you can see about just over half of what it should have or two-thirds precipitation 
going into Orange County, less than a half. Riverside, even drier, about a third of the rainfall they should have received. Taking a look at Palomar Mountain, at the top of the mountain, they also received about half of what they should see. Overall, when you look at the past two seasons, now you start getting into the red, where you're looking at 50% of normal for most areas, a little bit better for areas down in San Diego County, thanks to those closed lows during the back-to-back -back seasons of 2011 and 2012 falls. But overall, dry conditions covering the entire state. This has a big impact on our drought. Here's a look at the drought monitor, and you can see the drought has expanded across the west. It has eroded across Colorado with some of the torrential rain, and a pretty good monsoon for Arizona, southern Utah. Most of eastern United States it eroded, thanks also to a significant early wet part of the summer of 2013. And then elsewhere, drought is quite widespread and locally intense. All right, let's also see how the drought correlates to our water supply. As you would imagine, strong correlation. State water supply continues to decrease. From our nearby Diamond Valley Reservoir for the Metropolitan Water District, you can see since 2012, it's been steadily decreasing, now at levels significantly lower even this time last year, and closer to levels that we saw back in 2008 before that steep decline. Most of the region has seen significantly less runoff due to the lack of precipitation over the past year, really the past two years, and we're looking at 50 to 60 percent of what we should get. Diamond Valley Reservoir sitting at about 77 percent of normal. Even our large reservoir to the north, Shasta, significantly below as shown here the light blue line compared to the dark blue line and as you would expect with back-to-back -back dry years we are significantly lower than this time last year across the state the red line is the historical average and the blue is the current levels you can see most locations of our major reservoirs like Lake Oroville and Shasta to the north are quite a bit below that historical average line so we are starting to feel significant impacts from the back-to-back -back dry years, and that trend will continue until we receive significant precipitation. All right, let's take a look at the monsoon from 2013 and how it impacted our region. We had quite a bit of rainfall, significant rainfall, repeatedly over the same locations, such as the desert slopes, even parts of the deserts, the mountains, and the foothills from the San Diego Mountains all the way up to the San Bernardino Mountains. Here's a look at the summer 2013 percent of normal. You can see our mountain areas and spilling a little bit into the Inland Empire. Most of our mountains were 200 to 300 percent of normal, some pushing 400 percent of normal, where numerous intense thunderstorms moved over the same regions, causing significant flash flooding in those areas as well as debris flows like shown in the upper right that moved through Palm Springs. The active monsoon, what impact did that have on our fuel conditions? Let's take a look. Well currently our fuel conditions are just below average. You can see in early September with all that significant precipitation it brought them up to near average. Now they've dropped a little bit with the recent dry weather, but they're not at the low levels that we saw earlier this year. In the far left, you can see in around June, they were approaching the lowest values, which are in red, when we were very dry with fuel conditions. On the right, for some of the lower elevations on the coastal slopes, you can see we have been running right in the middle over the past month. We did peak up quite a bit in August with the high humidity that was around and the significant monsoon events that did impact some of our foothills. All right, now we're going to talk about ENSO or El Nino Southern Oscillation. Let's take a look at the neutral years and we have quite a few of them, about 20 since 1950. We're going to focus on the period from November through January. 
and basically use a neutral index during that period. We're going to focus on the wet year. The wet year is defined, at least in California, October through April. We are going to look at wet ENSO years and some of the extreme variability. Those are some years that were quite wet across most of California. The extreme variability, but an overall dry bias will show up as we'll take a look. We'll also quickly look at some other indices such as Pacific Decadal Oscillation. All right, before we take a look at the current conditions in 2013, let's take a look at last year. 2012, when we spoke, conditions across the equatorial Pacific were largely dominated by a weak and growing El Nino event, or warmer than normal temperatures as shown here. The orange and the tan areas was a large pool of above normal temperatures. That did not materialize into a stronger event during the winter months. In fact, it weakened after October and November and basically dissipated by mid part of the winter and has left us with the near neutral conditions, which we'll show in the next slide. So currently in our ENSO area that we focus on, conditions are basically in the white neutral conditions across a large pool of the equatorial Pacific and out to the dateline. However, do notice that to our north, most of the Pacific Ocean is above normal. The western and northern part of the Pacific Ocean showing some areas significantly above normal. And the cool pocket of water that has been persisting off of Baja or southwest of San Diego has diminished or shrunk in aerial coverage. Globally, when we look at those temperatures currently in 2013, you can see a large part of the Pacific and the Atlantic is above normal in warm conditions in the ocean. The main exception is the ENSO region where there's neutral conditions. When we look a little closer at some key locations across the equatorial Pacific Ocean and key Nino regions, we see that basically the running trend has been a little bit below normal to near neutral and current conditions circled in red in those regions running just about near zero or slightly below. Then we look deeper in the water to see what's below the sea surface temperatures at the surface. We do see some pockets of warm water, but also most recently in the El Nino Southern Oscillation region on the equatorial Pacific, we do see a pocket as circled here of cooler than normal water just below the surface. So what's the forecast? Well, basically, we run numerous computer models, the climate forecast system as shown here. And also we run dynamical and statistical models. And the basic indication is along the ENSO region of importance, we're expecting neutral conditions to continue with a little bit of slight warming, however, through the winter months. During the peak of our winter, so the chart here on the right shows 60% or slightly greater chance of neutral conditions continuing. So what has happened in past neutral years of ENSO? Well, let's take a look at one year, for example, compared to the long-term 30-year average. 1992-93, if you recall, brought significant precipitation to California. And in fact, when the whole wet season was added up, it was above normal for the entire state and significantly above normal for southwestern California. That was also the year that brought significant flooding to many areas of Southern California. When you look at the conditions and the wet years, let's focus on ENSO, neutral for example. January 93 topped out as one of the wettest months for the San Diego region. Also 91, and also look at January 78, February 2005, a very wet year. Neutral conditions have shown to produce some extreme variability and significant precipitation events and significant water year totals when you add it all up. Most recently, December 2010, that was a 
significant La Nina, or cool episode. And if you recall, December, that was a significant precipitation event, especially towards the Christmas time, and ended up to be above normal for the entire water year. A lot of numbers here, but basically it's the show that we have looked at a lot of the data. These are all neutral years listed. You can see 1992-93 shows up as overall a very wet year from October through April. You can also see 79, 80, 78, 79 wet years with neutral conditions, as well as 85, 86. Remember the big event in February 86 in Northern California? Very significant. How about the event in San Diego in 1980? Very significant as well. And then, of course, we also had the big atmospheric river event, which mostly was in Northern California, early January 1997. You can also see the Pacific Decadal Oscillation and the Arctic Oscillation. Take a look at these values to see if you see any correlation. There does not appear to be much correlation. You can see some of our wet years were in the PDO state that was basically near neutral as well. Again, this is only comparing ENSO neutral years to the wet year. All right, when you composite or you basically add all the years together, all the ENSO neutral years, you do see quite a bit of a dry bias along the west coast. Not much signal in extreme southern California in the deserts, but you do see a signal of dry in southwest California where we are. All right, let's take a look at the takeaway messages for the winter outlook. There's high uncertainty for the winter outlook, largely the precipitation forecast because of the extreme variability we've seen in past years during ENSO neutral conditions. The computer models do favor ENSO neutral conditions continuing through the winter and early part of the spring with some slight warming, but there is some considerable spread with some of the tools that are used to generate that. The current outlook is for elevated probabilities of above normal temperatures across southern and central California. That would basically mean less cold air outbreaks and also some significant periods of cloud cover. But there's no clear reliable signal for precipitation. So the general forecast is equal chances. There has been a dry tendency found with some of the past ENSO neutral years as we showed and there is a slight dry bias for extreme Southern California region. Extreme precipitation vents, and this is key, have occurred with neutral ENSO conditions. So that is something we definitely need to pay attention to in a year like this. There is not just one year, but there has been several years where we've seen extreme precipitation events or atmospheric rivers impacting California. What is not certain is which parts of California may get impacted. Last year, we saw it was Northern California. Just a couple years ago, it was Southern California. So that is something to basically keep in mind and plan for for the upcoming winter and knowing historically that that has occurred with ENSO neutral conditions. Here's the actual forecast from the Climate Prediction Center showing that large dome of warm air. We've really had a trend in the past 10 years of above normal temperatures across the West, especially in the summer but also in some of the winter months. For precipitation, we see a little bit of dry trend that is expected for December through February, sneaking into Southern California, but that mainly could be the desert regions and much of the southwest part of the United States. And there's also an area near Florida and the Southeast United States. All right, quickly taking a look at a couple new tools. This is an experimental tool that you might find useful. It's basically one-stop shopping where you can overlay current conditions from all the available weather stations. All the weather stations that are available should display on this map. You can also display forecast conditions, so outlooks, the next one day, two days, five days, seven days. And you can also display it in a graphical format as shown here. You can use tables and charts as shown here. You can look at test pro text products such as the area forecast discussion. 
basically everything is at your fingertips and you can control the layers and you can zoom up and change the Google map and apply other types of parameters such as satellite, radar, and weather hazards such as watches and warnings. There's also a new tool where you can define your area for your next seven day forecast instead of just a point forecast for one particular location like been available in the past. You can draw a polygon any shape and size and it'll generate a forecast. It'll show your icons, it'll show a table for the next several days and it'll give your traditional detailed seven day text forecast. So try these tools out and let us know how they work for you so that we can improve them. All right, thanks for joining this presentation. I want to leave you with some important links. These are links that we get a lot of questions for throughout the year. You can get all our graphical forecasts from the top link. Those are watches, warnings, and advisories. You can get the forecast that I just showed you from the link below that. And also the new area forecast. Keep that link handy and see if it's valuable during the winter. You can get all our digital forecasts. They've always been available at this location. Those are the high resolution wind, temperature, precipitation forecasts right directly from the National Weather Service local office. You can monitor the weather on Google. You can see every single weather station that's available for wind and precipitation. You can monitor rainfall on the links you see here. Those have some added stations, especially the second link has a lot of the alert gauges. You can monitor the rivers in real time and also look at historical information on the next link. Again, weather.gov San Diego for all your watches, advisories, and warnings. Also, be sure to check us out and share photos and information on Facebook, Twitter, and our YouTube video briefings like this one on our National Weather Service San Diego YouTube channel. Thanks for joining.